So let's start with the first task. We need to get the ballpark right. And here you can see that we will do two things. We will create a first draft. I'll use a, a Gen AI for this, which is really useful for markets that are, let's say, well established and well known in the sense that there's information on them in the internet. There are also highly specific markets, especially in the B2B uh, markets that you will not find a lot of information online and uh, chatbots will not know a lot of things about. In this case, you will need to turn more to the other methods especially expert inf interviews usually uh, that we will have on the triangulation slide but for markets such as fashion retail i'll make that a bit more specific later but you will find information through a chatbot and that's why we can readily use it here so here what i would just do is uh, to ask for the size of the market as such so for example what's the size of the german fashion retail market I ask that the chatbot and it will naturally give you an answer for that if it's in a good mood it will also provide some additional information i will get back to the shortcomings of chatbots later but let's say at first it usually works out very well make sure to get the year right so sometimes also depending on the version that you're using of the chatbot it may not have the latest knowledge but knowledge from two years ago or something like that so you may want to additionally ask for a growth rate to extrapolate it to the year that you are looking at so in this case that's 2023 here because this is the last year with the actuals and this case kind of plays at the very end of 2023 slash beginning of 2024 so this is kind of the most up-to-date knowledge that the chatbot could have but uh, usually doesn't have so it's important to make these numbers go to that date end of 2023 in this case so as you can see right in the middle here of the slide the Gen AI chatbot provided these 68.3 billion euros in market size for 2023. And on the left hand side and on the right hand side, I did a quick sanity check. So I did this once top down, starting from the population of Germany, and once bottom up on the right hand side, starting with the number of the average number of core fashion items owned by an average person for each of these numbers i also provided well a level of uncertainty so as you can see on the top left population of germany this is something well that's very clear actually i just learned that in the census 2022 they got the number wrong by some 1.4 million but still that's some two percent of error Let's look at the top right item, average number of core fashion items owned. So if you get that wrong by 2%, that would be incredibly precise. Uh, so this is just important here to well, understand that some things you can estimate quite precisely, while others you can't. And uh, when you look at this, this is also the key problem with the bottom-up sanity check, that uh, the estimations are just not precise. But let's go back to the top down sanity check on the left. So starting with the population of Germany of some 83.7 million, I can then cut out the share that's age 13 or plus because we don't want to look at kids fashion here. I think that's really a different segment. It may even be a bit critical that well the age segment between 13 and let's say 18 is behaving a bit differently because these people do not necessarily have their own income and may rely on their parents band but yeah that's a side note and an imperfection so i will just go here with age 13 plus then assuming a median annual disposable income of some 21.5k i'm going with the median here because it's less sensitive to outliers as opposed uh, to the error rate. And implicitly, I'm also assuming that, well, for people aged between 13 and 18, the spending behavior is kind of equivalent to the rest of the population, which is a simplification probably, but I guess it's not that wrong either, at least in terms of fashion, which we are looking at here. So the final building block is the average share of wallet spend on fashion which I have here some 
and if you multiply these numbers you get to a size of the base market so really just a German fashion retail market of some 72.0 billion and when you compare this against the Gen II direct shot of some 68.3 I think it gets really close with a deviation of something like 5% the error probably is primarily coming from the average share of wallet spend on fashion. I think the other building blocks are really something you can estimate very precisely. Maybe the median annual disposable income is a bit of an issue as well, but I think really if you wanted to do a sensitivity analysis here and ask where's the er error or deviation coming from, then it's probably because the share of wallet spend on fashion might be slightly different. When we look at the right hand side for the bottom up sanity check, we'll find that the results some 89.3 billion euros do deviate by some 23.5% from the direct shot of Gen AI. So this is a significant deviation. Actually, it was even larger when I did this at first. Let me walk you through the building blocks here to explain this. So in the first one, the average number of core fashion pieces owned. As you can imagine, this is something that varies a lot between individuals. So the Gen AI bot proposed something like between 100 and 300 when I first asked it. So I made it specific, of course, asked for Germany and asked for people aged 14 plus, but still. And yeah, then I decided to go with the lower end, so 100, because I only want to look at items that are replaced every now and then. I don't want to look at items that you buy once in your lifetime and then put in your closet and never use again. So that's why I decided to go with the lower end. 100 in this case. Average price of an item, as you can imagine, this also varies a lot. So 30, maybe somewhere in the middle, but it comes with a lot of dispersion. Replacement rate in years. So again, that's something, I don't know, it really depends, it's individual, so 2.5 might just be an average guess. The population that's aged 13 plus in Germany, we can pretty exactly pinpoint that, but still overall this leads to a major deviation of some 23.5%. And I think this also underlines why in consulting you usually think top down. But yeah, I really thought it was interesting to include this as well. Uh, to just walk to the Gen AI direct shot from both directions, so both top down and bottom up. That's why I included it here. And I think it just underlines that, as I just said, thinking top down is preferred. 